Developing nuclear power facilities is arguably one of the most challenging types of development due to its highly controversial nature, as well as its engineering and logistical challenges. When done right, they can provide massive amounts of power, but unfortunately frequently these projects turn into incredibly wasteful money pits. Here's 10 of the worst, which have combined to cost hundreds of billions of dollars. First up at number 10, we have the Three Mile Island Nuclear Power Plant. Three Mile Island is one of the most notorious and controversial infrastructure projects in American history. The nuclear energy industry has not been the same since a partial meltdown took place at reactor number two in 1979. Prior to this accident, the nuclear industry was booming with dozens of new reactors coming on each year during the 1970s. Following the incident, new projects slowed dramatically with virtually all new reactor construction in America coming to a halt by the mid 1980s. So what actually happened at Three Mile Island? Well, construction began in 1968. Progress was relatively quick by nuclear construction standards, and by 1974, Reactor 1 was online. Four years later, Reactor 2 was commissioned. The project cost a little over $2 billion, inflation-adjusted dollars. In 1979, a series of system failures in Reactor Number 2, compounded by human error, led to a significant release of radioactive material. No one was killed in the initial incident, and Reactor 2 has shut down since then. Cleanup and decommissioning costs have risen into the billions. It's estimated that up to 2 million people may have been exposed to some degree of radiation, although the exact amount is hard to quantify. Studies of populations in the surrounding area have concluded that there haven't been statistically significant increases in cancer, although many anti-nuclear activists have disputed this claim. Following the partial meltdown, Reactor 1 was brought back online and until very recently was supplying a substantial amount of power to the state of Pennsylvania, enough to power over 800,000 homes. In 2018, the decision was made to shut this reactor down as well, despite a license extension that would have allowed it to operate until 2040. On to number 9, we have the Marble Hill Nuclear Power Plant. Marble Hill has the dubious honor of being one of the most expensive nuclear power plants to be shut down before it ever generated any power. An amazing $2.5 billion was spent on this partially built facility in the late 1970s prior to it being canceled. The combination of skyrocketing costs and increasing public backlash proved to be too much and ultimately in 1984 it was canceled. Substantial progress had been made on the facility by the time it was shut down. One of the reactors had already been installed and needed to be taken apart and auctioned off. Additionally, a series of high voltage lines had begun to be installed leading to the plant. For years after the cancellation, the towers stood with no power lines on them. Finally, in the mid-1990s, an ice storm damaged the towers and they were taken down. In 2005, demolition officially began and over the next decade, a demolition contractor meticulously demolished much of the facility. Next up at number 8, we have the Bellefonte Nuclear Power Plant in Alabama. This one has a very similar story to the Marble Hill Nuclear Power Plant. Construction began in 1975, and despite opposition, engineering challenges, and several high-profile nuclear accidents like the Three Mile Island one, progress continued through the mid-1980s. In 1988, however, with Reactor 1 and 2 at roughly 90 and 60 percent complete, the decision was made to halt construction. Some of the usable equipment was relocated to other facilities, and now the two reactors sit at 50 and 35 percent complete. It appeared the project would be revived in 2005 when plans for reactors 3 and 4 began to be developed. These plans never got off the ground as the Tennessee Valley Authority reevaluated energy consumption trends and decided that a large plant was unnecessary. About $6 billion was spent on this incomplete facility. At number 7, we have the Shoreham Nuclear Power Plant. This is yet another multi-billion dollar nuclear plant that was never brought online. It was announced in 1965 and was part of the Long Island Lighting Company's plan to service the growing demand for the power in the area. The proposal originally expected to only cost 65 to 75 million dollars in 1965 dollars and it expected to be online by 1973. At its inception, the proposal received very little public backlash. One safety study that was performed did assert that its proximity to a military test facility could be a potential hazard, but they said even if a plane crashed into the nuclear power plant, it was unlikely to breach the core. Then, during construction, the Three Mile Island nuclear incident happened. But in the months following, the Shoreham site became the epicenter of intense anti-nuclear protests. One day in June of 1979 saw 15,000 protesters and 600 arrests. 
Eventually, the opposition became too great and politicians led by Mario Cuomo voted to shut the project down. The real losers of this situation were the residents of Long Island who got stuck paying a 3% surcharge on their bills for the next 30 years as a way to pay for this debacle. The decommissioning process took almost $200 million and several years to complete. In 2004, one of the more absurd press conferences was held to commemorate the opening of two new windmills that had been built on the site of the former power plant. The politicians proudly patted themselves on the back for converting the old nuclear site to a clean, wind-powered site. They failed to mention, however, that the two windmills would produce roughly one thirty-five thousandths of the energy that the nuclear plant would have produced. Had it been in operation, the nuclear power plant would have saved roughly 3 million tons of carbon per year from being released into the atmosphere. On to number six, we finally have one that's not just a nuclear power plant that was shut down in the wake of Three Mile Island. We have Camp Century, which was part of the U.S. military program Project Iceworm. It was established in the 1950s to create a series of nuclear storage facilities that would strengthen America's position in the Cold War. Based in northern Greenland, this facility would be close enough to strike the Soviet Union and hidden enough to survive a first strike from the Soviets. It was top secret at the time, so publicly, sites like Camp Century were touted as research facilities. The site was a series of subsurface ice tunnels and powered by its own nuclear reactor. Construction on the base began without the explicit agreement from the Danish government, and permission was never really asked for or granted to the U.S. military. The site was abandoned after only eight years, and the larger Project Iceworm, which was at one point planned to have 4,000 kilometers of underground ice tunnels, never came to fruition. There were a number of issues that led to the abandonment of the camp after only eight years. The biggest issue was that the ice was less stable than expected. The shifting sheets of ice threatened the camp, including the nuclear reactor, which had to be shut down after only three years. Eventually, the shifting ice buried and crushed the buildings and tunnels below. Another problem was dealing with the waste. Sewage was sent to a sump not far from the living quarters. Not surprisingly, this led to odor issues, but also caused deformation problems as the sewage made its way through hundreds of feet of ice. Decades later, there's been concern that some of the buried waste and large amounts of diesel fuel will be released as the ice melts. So in addition to being a failed military project, it's also a little bit of an environmental disaster. On to number five, we have the Hartsville Nuclear Power Plant in Hartsville, Tennessee. This one's going to go back to sounding like a lot of the other stories you've already heard. Construction continued on this nuclear power plant in spite of the Three Mile Island incident that occurred in 1979. But unfortunately, like so many other nuclear power plants at the time, opposition began to grow. Additionally, around this time, energy demand projections for the area were revised downward. By 1983, the first reactor was canceled, and a year later, the entire project was scrapped. At this time, it was estimated to be between 30 and 45 percent complete. Eight billion dollars in 2024 inflation-adjusted dollars had been spent to this point. In the years since, the area has seen sporadic use and redevelopment. An industrial park and a prison were built on the site, although neither have had anywhere near the economic impact that a functional power plant would have had on the area. At number four, we have the Hanford Vitrification Plant in Washington State. Dating all the way back to the Manhattan Project in World War II, the Hanford site has been one of the most crucial nuclear sites in the world. Unfortunately, due to its prolific role in producing plutonium, it also became one of the most contaminated. In the 1980s, a massive project was launched to clean up the site. Unfortunately, the only thing that takes longer and costs more than a government project is a government project that also includes the word nuclear. To be fair though, it's no simple project. The site contains 56 million gallons of nuclear waste in various forms and using different containment strategies. Much of it was leaking and large swaths of the surrounding area were in desperate need of remediation. Originally expected to last several decades, numerous issues including more waste leaks as well as political, financial, and engineering turmoil have extended the timeline by many more decades. One of the key goals is to turn much of the liquid waste into solid waste by heating it and combining it with glass. By turning the waste into a solid, it's much more stable, safer, and easier to store. Budgets have been completely busted for this project. The glassification plant, which was originally supposed to cost $4 billion and open in 2009, is still not open 
and it's now expected to cost nearly $20 billion. Another issue is that the glassification plant can only handle about half the waste, the waste classified as low activity. Debate is still going on to decide what to do with the other half the waste. A serious critique of this project is that they are several decades off from a solution for the high-level waste. Seen as a much more contentious issue, it's been tiptoed around and may not even be fully planned for several decades. Some have argued that definitions of high-level waste should be altered to give the project more flexibility with how to handle the waste, but others are concerned that doing this would open the door for corners to be cut. While it's undoubtedly a complex and important project, a price tag that will likely reach a quarter of a trillion dollars and a timeline of another 75 years is truly astonishing. You've made it this far, hopefully that means you're enjoying the video. So if you could like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. It'll help the channel a lot. Now back to the top three. Staying in Washington State for number three, we have the Satsop Nuclear Power Plant. It was a series of nuclear reactors in Washington State designed to meet the growing demand in the Pacific Northwest. The facility is situated near Grays Harbor on a 1,600-acre plot of land with an original cost estimate of just over $4 billion. It would later be revised to $24 billion. Construction began in 1977 and was initially moving forward at a completion rate of roughly 2% per month. Like many nuclear power plants, the budget began to balloon, and by the early 1980s, the cost was now expected to be over $20 billion. The Three Mile Island incident led to massive negativity for nuclear power in general. When the Washington public power system was unable to raise the additional funding, the project came to a halt. One of the reactors was over 75% complete, while the other was under 20%. This sounds like an unfortunately common story, similar to many other nuclear power plants in America, but this one does have a little bit of a silver lining. In the years after the project was canceled, Enterprising entrepreneurs have taken an interest in the site and taken it a different direction. The incomplete remains of the nuclear site have been used for an Overstock.com call center, other offices, movie sets, and military and fire training sites. You can even go on tour of the facility and learn about its history and its pivot to a more commercial use. Coming down the wire, at number two we have the Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository. It's been a decades-long, highly controversial project in Nye County, Nevada. The goal of this project was to create a safe storage facility for the nation's nuclear waste. Waste from both weapons and power plants could be shipped to Yucca Mountain, where it would be safely stored hundreds of feet below the mountain. Unfortunately, the highly controversial and politicized nature of this project has led to it becoming one of the biggest wastes of money in human history. The search for a safe nuclear storage site dates back into the middle of the 20th century. In 1978, the Department of Energy began to narrow its focus down to several sites throughout the U.S. By the late 1980s, the search had been narrowed down to just one site, Yucca Mountain. Unsurprisingly, the reaction to the project has been highly bifurcated. Some people, including many experts, would tell you that this project is in a great location and would solve one of the most pressing issues surrounding nuclear technology. Others will say the exact opposite, noting that Nevada has earthquakes and highlighting the perceived risks of transporting nuclear waste by truck or rail, and will argue that the project would poison important Native American heritage sites. Not shockingly, a majority of Nevada residents opposed the project. More than two decades after the project was supposed to receive its first shipment of nuclear waste, it still sits incomplete. For now, politicians from both sides of the aisle have rejected it, and it doesn't appear to be moving forward anytime soon. With increasing energy issues worldwide, and the recent news of some, including the EU, classifying nuclear now as green energy, it'll be interesting to see if this project is ever revived or if it will continue to sit stalled for decades to come. And finally, at number one, we have the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in modern-day Ukraine. In the 1970s, a massive nuclear power plant was built in the USSR. The plant was made up of four reactors and commissioned in 1977. During the first several years, the plant had several incidents, including at least one partial reactor meltdown. A recently released KGB document acknowledged that as early as 1983, it was recognized the plant as one of the most dangerous of its kind in the world. 
On April 25th, 1986, workers began to attempt a safety test in which workers shut down the reactor's power regulating and emergency safety systems. At the same time, they removed most of the control rods with the reactor still running at low output. The poor design of this test combined with other mistakes by plant operators led to a reactor meltdown which included a massive explosion and intense fire that would burn for nearly two weeks. The effects were devastating on the surrounding area. During the explosion and ensuing fire, radiation was spread over dozens of miles. The once thriving city nearby was abandoned overnight. Countries as far away as Italy and Greece had detectable levels of radiation from the incident. Exact casualty totals are unclear, but range from under 100 the number of direct deaths in the incident to as many as 4,000 excess deaths based on various models and the cumulative effects of the radiation. Critics of the nuclear power industry point to this incident as why nuclear power isn't a viable option. In the minds of many, the potential for more devastating incidents like this one make it simply too risky to even consider. On the other hand, advocates for the industry point to the outdated technology that was used at the Chernobyl plant. Additionally, poor decision making, operator errors, and the lax safety procedures could have been avoided with proper planning and training. In the decades following this incident, the nuclear industry was absolutely devastated. This appears to be slowly changing and the current environmental concerns tend to be more centered around greenhouse gases. And this is an area where nuclear power excels. Thanks for watching. New videos out every weekend.